Uh, you all are here. Uh, we're not webcabbing, uh, but if for those on the recording who are listening to the recording, we're on the Central Oregon coast at Cape Perpetua, um, south of Newport, north of Florence. I'll have a map later. And this is a um, view from the top of Cape Perpetua, the highest point on the Oregon coast where you can drive up and uh, look out. So about 800 feet high. Um, and this is looking to the south. We are here, as you might know. And the discussion or the thesis that we're doing is Yahat's basalt, is it related to Yellowstone? Or it, is it? I'm saying it is, but I need to uh, make you understand why that is, is so. Okay. So you might first say, Yellowstone is over in Wyoming, three uh, states over. Are you sure you're talking about the same Yellowstone that I know of? And yes, this is uh, Old Faithful, and uh, where they have hot steaming pools and all of this amazing geology over there. Um, the, this is an old family favorite. We were there about 20 years ago when I took this picture. Um, and that's my wife and daughter with exactly the same pose. And they didn't know they were doing that until I showed them the picture. So it was, it's a family favorite. And the same Yellowstone, you're, you're saying that we have the um, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and these amazing pools where there's um, one level after another pouring out and forming all of this um, uh, amazing uh, collection of, of um, calcite, actually, it's, it's calcareous. All right, um, it's also the Yellowstone where one grizzly bear can just totally traffic jam the whole area, and uh, everybody is out there, um, and it's where the buffaloes roam. So, yes, it is that Yellowstone that I'm talking about. But you say, 650 miles, 1,000 kilometers away is where um, I'm saying that these are related. So uh, you, you may be a little skeptical, and, but that's why you're here. That, this is now that it's 650 million years ago. So to how is this? Well, you have to employ come on, plate tectonics and a bunch of time. So with plate tectonics and a bunch of time, we may be able to get them at least close together. Maybe not right exactly on top of each other, but close together. So, one caveat that I, I'll say, this is not my work. Um, many geologists uh, have put this picture together. It's an amazing that they've been able to put this together and all those geologists who mapped and detailed and went through the forests and the stream beds trying to find a uh, outcrop in this area that is so covered with uh, beautiful trees and, and greenery. Uh, but it also, all those people who put together the theory of plate tectonics in the last 60 years. And yes, when I went to Oregon State University in geology in the late 60s, it was not taught. We were just the glimmerings. It was, it was one of those theories that was kind of, well, how do you move continents all around like that? That's, um, anyway, uh, a lot has happened since then. And through the ex experts in all sorts of fields are able to put little pieces together so that the geologists can put the big picture from a little rock sample over here and an exposure over there, putting all these uh, together to tr figure out what might have happened in the past. So I'm reporting what I have found uh, in my own quest, and it's not, the quest is not complete, never should be complete, and there are all new things coming out. As you'll see in this paper, there uh, was one, uh, I refer to a paper that was published in 2021, last year, and it kind of revolutionized well, there was a lot of talk before then, but really put down 
the um, stakes that we don't we know a lot uh, we have better ideas of what might have happened in the past and some of these are still controversial they're not as all science we go back and forth so that article was published in last year and some people didn't like it or says oh but hold it I know this and and so there's this back and forth in science as you goes along okay so now let's go on and the first thing I talked about I said plate tectonics and time so we'll talk first a little bit about time this is a geologic time scale and I I love Ray Troll's artwork and uh, this is one that he has that lays out all the layers that we know about now anywhere on the earth you don't get all the layers but they put put them together uh, notice it is a nonlinear scale it's 4.6 billion years ago so for the first 4 billion years in, in other words 8 ninths of the way are all here and then the rest of it is what we know more about because that's where we have good fossil ep ep uh, evidence about in here in the Cambrian um, organisms started to making uh, shells and um, plates and, and different structures that meant that we can get good fossils easy to uh, find fossils so we have a pretty good record above there this is much harder to figure out okay Yahats basalt that's about 36 million years ago for those of you in the know it's the late Eocene so a geologic map of the um, uh, just to get a picture of where we are now that we know a little bit about the time where we are is in Oregon on the west coast between Newport and Florence is this uh, black or I'm sorry the bluish darkish blue uh, whoop I'm sorry okay sorry um, I wrong button I need the button for the light so here from Cape Perpetua and actually Yahats just to the north Cape Perpetua down to Sea to Head and the seal uh, sea land caves are the area that is covered with this Eocene uh, volcanic rock this basalt so uh, that's what we're talking about um, and so you get an idea um, Eugene is inland here and Corvallis is up here Newport to the north okay now it is a basalt what is basalt most of you probably know it is a black microcrystalline rock if you look out the window right here you'll see a bunch of rocks on the coastline uh, and that's all basalt it is solidified lava this is what's coming out right now on the island of Hawaii um, there is a lot of um, lava being poured out when that magma comes up and pours out as lava magma when it's under molten rock below the surface when it comes out on the surface it's called lava um, and that is solidifying on the surface and that forms basalt so basalt is being formed as we speak now on in Hawaii it also you find it on the moon and you find it on Mars so it's pretty uh, common rock it cooled rapidly so microcrystalline meaning that it, the uh, the elements that were coming together uh, the, the lava didn't have time enough to for the molecules to find the right place in the and form big crystals that form very small crystals but it is a very hard rock um, and creates headlands and capes uh, because of that so that's why Cape Perpetua is so high and right on the coastline and it's why the uh, ocean is uh, bash is uh, held at bay at least for a little bit and slows down the erosion back but it can crack during the um, when it was erupted or shortly thereafter or by all of the earthquakes we can have in this area 
and some of those cracks are enlarged by weathering and by this uh, amazing wave action that's constantly pounding the waves, as we can see in Cook's Chasm and Devil's Churn just down on the uh, water. Okay, so that's Yahat's Basalt. Now we have to try to make that look like something that we have in uh, to Yellowstone. What, how, how are we going to get there? Well, we have to go to plate tectonics, as I said. And if you, um, if you once in the back, you can come filter down and if you want to sit down. Okay, you're okay? Yeah, there's some seats down here in the front. Okay. And um, so we're going to review plate tectonics very quickly um, and then go through some of the details of plate tectonics that they found. So um, the Earth now we know is like an egg. It has a hard shell. It has a yolk in the middle, that's the core, and it has the white surrounding it, which we uh, call the mantle in the Earth. So the crust is solid and brittle, it can crack and form those, whoop, form those um, uh, faults and earthquakes. Um, so the, the crust breaks, but the mantle is viscous, and actually the crust kind of floats on the mantle. And it flows, so it doesn't have earthquakes. Not enough energy can be built up to make a fracture that causes an earthquake. And the inner core, the core and the inner core uh, are iron. The inner core is solid. The outer core is molten and has currents in it that form the magnetic field that we have that's, that, that shields the Earth from the solar wind. Okay, let's look a little bit closer. In the mantle, it's not just, doesn't just sit there. It kind of gets heated from below. That hot uh, mantle rises up in something called a convection current. Um, so the hot rock is lighter. When you heat something up, it gets less dense, comes to the surface, uh, spreads out, and then slowly cools as it goes along, but it, and then descends in back in. So this is a convection current. Um, we also, these drag along the plates, move them along so that um, some areas are pulled apart, like this area, which is a divergent boundary. And it creates new crust there. Whereas the convergent boundary is where we get rid of crust consumed as it goes, the denser plate is consumed and goes underneath the lighter plate. If they're both the same um, kind of density, they crumple up and we have something like India going against Asia and the Himalayas are crumpled up into a big mountain chain. So that's where you consume crust. Okay, I just because we know which way the continents are moving now, uh, we can figure that out. We can go back in time and reconstruct where the continents were before. We know that North America is going west, so if we go back 94 million years, it must have gone, it must have gone east and was in this position closer to Africa it's when, and actually 200 million years ago is when they were together. And then they broke apart about 200 million years ago and have been forming the North Atlantic for a little over a million years at 94 million years old. The South Atlantic was not yet widely open. Well, I do want to say the color is the age of the ocean basins here. So it goes from very young, green is like 60, 80, 100 uh, million years. So a um, hundred million years is here. Um, so that's been opening at this time, 94 million years ago, we've been opening for about a million years. So a this is called a divergent boundary, that sp spreading ridge in the middle of the Atlantic, the convergent boundaries up here in the Mediterranean and along the coast of North America and South America. And uh, there was, at this time, 
no Panama Isthmus. So the circulation of the oceans was much different. Uh, and then again, North America has moving west. That's important so that we'll get back to that. So this is what the plate motion is now with um, Africa moving this way, South America kind of just moving this way, other plates, especially the Pacific plate going that way. Notice the arrows. The arrows show the direction, but the length of the arrow also shows how fast. This is about 10 centimeters per year, uh, whereas the North America is only about three, uh, two and a half to three centimeters per year. That's about the, um, the growth rate of your toenails. So it's not very fast, but over thousands of years or even 300 years since we've had the last earthquake out here, there's been a lot of movement. Um, and it's building up forces so that someday we'll have an earthquake. Okay. Let's look a little bit more at the Pacific Ocean. And here we notice that the Hawaiian Islands form a line. And that is in the same direction as the plate is moving. So we think of this as a conveyor belt. The plate is a conveyor belt. And uh, we have something called a hot spot. Um, and Hawaii is a hot spot. Now, we have the big circulation of the convection currents that I've shown you, but there's also some plumes that come up from the mantle that come and pierce the uh, crust and form a volcano. But then the crust moves along and it moves that volcano out of, from over the top of the hot spot and hot spots are considered to be stationary. So the plate is moving across the stationary plume coming up and it's poking through uh, a number of volcanoes. There it is. Okay, so uh, here is that plume, the Hawaiian hotspot, and here is the island, big island of Hawaii. And right now there's eruptions at Mauna Loa and Kilauea um, and from this plume coming up. Now remember, the plate is moving that way, or at least in this diagram, and so once it was formed, like Maui, was formed about 1.3 million years, but it has moved that far away and away from the hot spot. And Molokai, uh, Oahu, and then all the way to Kauai uh, is out uh, five million years ago. So, so that's this motion, and you can think of the plates as conveyor belts. So let's look at another hot spot. Um, this one is Yellowstone. So we're going to look at the North American continent, and Yellowstone is right there. So what is its um, situation, and does it do the same thing? Is the conveyor belt moving? And yes, indeed, the conveyor belt is moving, but this only doesn't have a volcano coming up all the time, like in Hawaii, or quite often uh, we have eruptions there. Here, uh, the last eruption at Yellowstone was uh, 631,000 years ago. So more than a half, a 0.6 million years ago. But then there were older ones, and as, again, there's the arrow showing the direction. So we should expect older and older, and sure enough, older. This is out to 7 to 10 million years when that um, had a big caldera there. So the volcano has been erupting for a long time. Okay, so that here shows a little bit longer and, and a few more of those, but let's look at it. Uh, oh, and it's also disturbed. The, Ro the Rocky Mountains goes through this area, but this has dis disturbed and, and kind of pulverized those Rocky Mountains and then the Snake River has been able to level out that area, and that's why you have the uh, Snake River playing in that area. So let's simplify. We can see those same uh, 
calderas. Caldera is just a very big crater. Um, so um, uh, we go from now, 6 million, 12 million, 16 million years you go, and then in between 16 and 17 million years, uh, essentially all hell broke loose, loose <laughs> because they were massive outpouring of rock. This covers about nearly half of Washington and about a third of Washington is covered by this volcanic rock. And if you've gone through the Columbia River Gorge, you see the layers of black rock and have some of those waterfalls, Mount Loma Falls coming down over the rocks, this hard rock uh, into the Columbia River Gorge. So, and all of those, most of those have this columnar jointing. Okay, and there's even, uh, to bring it a little closer, some of that lava went out through the proto-Columbia uh, River Gorge. Uh, it's been plugged and then re-excavated re, uh, uh, re a number of times uh, and come down the coast. And there's actually some deposits that came from Eastern Oregon that are, make up um, Depot, near Depot Bay, yeah, Quinta Head, and uh, the last, the most southerly, is Seal Rock. So, some pretty amazing, um, a whole nother story that we'll, we could talk about later. Okay. So, we have now, at 16 million years ago, Yellowstone was here. So, um, but we say Yahat's basalt was uh, eroded 36 million years ago, but at least we're closer. You can see we're at 350, million, uh, 350 miles, um, about 500 uh, kilometers away. Now, so we've, we've shortened the distance, but we still are not talking apples and apples. We're talking about 36 million years ago with Cape Perpetua, and this is 16 million. Oh, the MA means million years ago. That's just the shorthand that the geologists use. So you'll see that on a lot of my uh, labeling. All right. So we say, oh, it, now you probably have uh, now have a clue. Okay. So I brought it from Yellowstone here to here. Now I just need to bring it back to here and it's close to Cape Perpetua. And that's what you say. We had, let's go back to 36 million years ago. And that's a really good idea, but we, there's a big problem that people have brought up. And that is that the hotspots life cycle. So you get one of these flood basalts, like those Columbia River basalts, when a new hot spot comes to the surface, it kind of forms a head with all this very um, fluid and uh, filled with, with um, volatiles head on it as it comes to the surface and when it punctures through, you get a flood basalt, basalts like you would see in Columbia River basalt. So if that's true, then Oh, and then after that, then the continuing uh, activity from the rising plume tail comes up and forms these volcanoes that we see in Hawaii or in Yellowstone. But does this mean, if this is true, then Yellowstone began and reached the surface and only began seven, uh, 17, 16, 17 million years ago? and there, we can't track it back to Cape Perpetua. Okay, so that's the problem. So we have to think about what other ways we can get it back here. So, so is it only 17 million years ago or is there something else going on? Okay, we're gonna need to have a little bit more information before we, I can get back to that point of um, 17 million years, uh, uh, the Yellowstone, the age of the Yellowstone hotspot. Okay. 
So we're going to go to North America this time, and especially right here to the Juan de Fuca plate. There's Yellowstone again. And we'll look close up just offshore here. There's something called the Juan de Fuca plate. It's small, um, but very important for us because it's coming our way and it's building up energy and there's going to be this big earthquake and we're going to have tsunamis also. So lots of um, um, lots of possible problems in the future but um, let's look at this boundary. Um, it is a convergent. We're getting the spreading ridge offshore about 300 kilometers uh, 500 mile, uh, 300 miles, 500 kilometers approximately. Um, we're creating C4 there and it's moving out. And when it gets to the North American continent, it started, is pushed underneath. It's the denser of them and so goes underneath. Let's look a little closer at this area. Well, the whole area, oh, this is uh, a cross section. You can see Washington and Seattle up here, but you also can see um, that when the plate um, kind of gets um, deep enough, it starts to melt. The, it, it heats up and starts to melt, and that comes up as volcanoes, and those are uh, created the Cascade volcanoes. So Mount St. Helens, Mount Adams in this cross section, which is just north of Portland, or uh, Mount Rainier or Mount Hood, uh, all, all the other mountains up and down the Cascades. But let's look a little closer, especially at this area where uh, the plate plunges underneath the, uh, the uh, continent, uh, continental crust. Okay, again, we have sediments built up on, we have the crust, plus we have sediments and we could have a volcano out there. Think about the Hawaiian Islands. At some point, they're gonna crash against a uh, continent as the plate moves further uh, northwest. So uh, at some point, they'll have to be subducted um, or something else will happen to them. We also have sediments that come from the, um, the settling out of a material in the ocean or from sand and stuff like from the Columbia River coming out and filling in uh, this trench. So we don't have much of a trench because we have a lot of sediments coming out from the Columbia River and other rivers here. Okay. Um, this, when we get a this plate moving under, it will scrape off a bit of the um, sediments. Some of these uh, volcanoes, maybe, or whatever they are, many continents. And um, even a little bit of the crust can be ripped off and subducted. And they're stacked up underneath and pushed up. Organ is formed from this subduction, as we'll see in the, uh, uh, in the next slide. But for here, let's look at what happens when there is a microcontinent. This is further north in the northern part of Washington State, where the Okanagan, this was back in the Jurassic time, 150, 180 million years ago, and it was pushed underneath, tried to be subducted, but this was too light and too big of a blob to be subducted. So what happens? This is what happens. Uh, we, we had a, a wedge, a uh, accretionary wedge here. It gets crumpled up and we get a new uh, accretionary wedge when the subduction zone jumps. So it jumps once we get a plug kind of in the sediments here. Okay, so now, 200 million years ago, um, we know that North America was, the coastline of North America was at about the 
Oregon-Idaho boundary. So if you would have real estate property if you were in Spokane. But we've added these terrains they're called. That's when we get a big blob that is uh, accreted. So the Wallala uh, and the Franciscan. And the last one to dock was the Silesia. So it was accreted about 50 million years ago. So a big blob of stuff uh, got smushed into one of these that couldn't go down. So the what was the subduction zone jumps and to the new area. Okay. Now, so we have that piece of the uh, puzzle. Let's look at what the Yellowstone hotspot, and we get a reprieve from that idea that the Yellowstone, 17 million years, that's all. Uh, we can't get it back further. Well, this was published in 2021, so last year uh, was published saying that, no, nope, the Yellowstone, there's evidence that the Yellowstone uh, hotspot was long-lived and much more robust than they see. So that outpouring of the Columbia River basalt was just an episode, and it existed before then. So it's at least 56 million years ago. When it first came up, or if it, if it was the first time, at any rate, there's another big flood basalts that were emplaced offshore, and that's what formed most of Silesia that came in. So uh, that was at about 50. So it was produced about 56 million years ago, this big province off there with all this volcanics, and then they, were, they got smushed against the North American continent. Um, and I like that it's now named Siletzia after the town of Siletz, which is north of here. Um, now, but what happened in between? So here, North America is going over what was this Yellowstone hotspot. It overruns and smushes in um, the uh, Siletzia but Yellowstone is still down there, but now it's shielded from erupting. It's building up pressure down there, but it doesn't, can't make its way through easily. And so uh, it builds up and builds up, but that's why later on we're gonna have the flood basalts. That's the simple view. There's a lot more going on in this paper. It's the Camp and Wells 2021 paper. Uh, goes back in time, but all of a sudden, look at how this goes. Here's that what I've shown you before, going back in time, all of these big calderas back here. It says 20 million years here, 30 million, and 40 million. So all of a sudden, we have um, what we can, we have where the Yellowstone hotspot was at least closer to where we are now. So there's the Siletz terrain. It's moved somewhat. And then the Yahats basalt is right there. And the Yellowstone hotspot now at 36 million, comparing apples to apples, is about 150 miles. So these hotspots are fairly big, so it probably did have some coming up from below. Um, at that, and so there, there is a relationship. This is not a caldera from um, the uh, Yellowstone Hall hotspot, but it was close. Um, but notice something here. If you remember the top of Utah, if you're familiar in the map, and then Nevada, and then what is this boundary? California is to the south of it. Oregon's to the north. So this map shows Cape Perpetua down in California. So is it down in California? <laughs> so this is my last piece of the puzzle and then to finish up this is how did we get further north and what's going on to make the Yellowstone hotspot create some volcanoes here up and down the 
the coast of Oregon. So the last bit or a twist in the story is that we can look at how the earth is moving now. Now, the North American continent is moving pretty much 3.5 centimeters per year down this way. But if you look at individual stations, if you subtract off that general motion, you see that they're moving in a direction indicated by these little arrows. So on top of the general motion, the, the um, Oregon and Washington, uh, well, first let's look south, California. Oh, it's really moving this way, especially the Pacific Plate. This is the area that is the San Andreas Fault. So the San Andreas Fault, part of California is moving north, the little edge, and then down to Baja, California, it's moving north. Um, inland is still moving north, but not as, as large. And then there's the plate uh, up here in Oregon and in Washington, we're being twisted, rotated around. And if you look up north, unfortunately, there is Canada that is not moving. And Canada is like, it says, nope, don't come this way. So with California coming this way, what are we? We're the kind of crumpled cars between two semi-trucks. <laughs> one stopped and the other one's still bearing down. And that's why we have a bunch of earthquakes uh, in this area, especially some like the Seattle Fault further north. Okay, um, let's look at a little bit more of a diagram here um, uh, uh, to show the same thing, but it throws in also the one that you can play. Uh, So that's what's happening um, now. And we say, has this twisting been happening before? And we can go back and look at where the Klamath, uh, the, uh, Klamath Mountains and the Blue Mountains were when they were subducted. This was back again in the Jurassic. So a long time ago, the 180 or so million years ago, they got accreted on to the Oregon coast or onto the North American coast. And, um, and then they have been twisted. So at 20 million years ago, it was already rotated as California was pushing north. And to the present day, um, where the Klamath Mountains are near the coast and we're there. We here also got in that twist. So we have been pushed north during this, the last uh, 36 million years. And so we went from California into the wonderful land of Oregon. Okay, so Cape Perpetua moved north. Uh, just to add to that, when you get a torquing like that, a twisting, you can break things, this is, happens to be Puget Sound, an example in Puget Sound, but it's also in this area. When you get the twisting, you get faults, usually at about a 45 degree angle. And uh, in this case, it's where, um, well, and then those faulted areas are a weakness where the lava could come up. So this is Puget Sound, uh, but what we're looking at here is the Silesia train, it also has faults at a somewhat 45 degree angle. And we have the Yahats basalt, they call it the Tillamook basalt, but it's the Cascadia head is another one. And then Gray's River, which is just north of the Columbia River in Washington, uh, is another volcano. All of those came up at about the same time. So just in summary, so that's our thing. We are close, but, and probably some of the magma came up from the Yellowstone hotspot, but we weren't over the top of the Yellowstone hotspot. Related, related.
Okay, so now as a summary, just to wrap it up, uh, we've talked about the Yahats Basalt and the volcano that was here. We did a lot of talk about plate tectonics and geologic time, hotspots, Hawaiian Yellowstone, uh, talked about all the subduction and accretion, especially the accretion, and um, that Yellowstone, at least according to this new article, formed much of um, Celestia offshore, and then that was smushed on to, uh, added to um, the North American continent. And North America uh, overrode the Yellowstone hotspot and kind of shielded it for a while. Uh, and then pushy California came up and is pushing us north and twisting us uh, and creating those cracks where we have weaknesses where we can get volcanoes coming up. So that, those magmas, that, those cracks, created Cape Perpetua, Cascade Head, and Gray's River volcanics. And then, of course, since then, there's been much erosion, a bunch of stuff dumped on top of that, so it makes it very hard for the geologists to work through this. Okay, just quickly, um, so that's the end of it, except I wanted to give you a few references. Um, that these, This is the, um, and we'll post this, I'll have to post uh, all of this and uh, put it out on the website. Um, the um, Camp and Wells paper, and an earlier Wells paper, um, 2013, talking about Celestia. A wonderful resource is Nick Zentner, um, and he has a bunch of videos, short videos, especially the ones produced for, by PBS uh, called Nick on the Rocks. So, so just type in Nick on the Rocks and you'll get to them. Um, there's a number of nice, good books about Oregon geology. This is the Marley Miller, whoop, Marley Miller book. Um, Roadside Geology of Oregon by the second edition, which is much better than the first, well, we have so much more information since the first one. And then a really interesting uh, about the geology of Seal Rock, which was done by a, a geologist, Maxine uh, Centella, uh, who retired here and wanted to know more about the area. So she published that um, summary of the rocks Near, near Seal Rock. And I love Robert Lilly's books on uh, his geology. Okay, so now we have uh, some, uh, some editing, or some question and answer because I'm out of stuff. Yes? On your previous slide, you showed yeah. the, the, it's the map of the, yeah. that one. This one. No, that one, that one. Oh, whoop. Yep, okay. Yeah, that one. There's the violet dotted line. Yeah, that's I, I just put that across so that you could see where Utah and North Nevada is. So this was, would be where the California boundary would be. It doesn't give a boundary of where California goes in exactly here. But California is in this area. And so I just continued that on to show that the Yahats Basalt was south of that. So we were at 36 million years ago we were south of where we are now, relative to the rest of the world. It's not, it doesn't correspond with a geologic feature like the Snake River Valley or the... Well, I mean, we have the Snake in. River Valley, of, but remember, this part only is being twisted by California coming up. This okay. isn't being affected much by that. Okay. So, so it is different, yeah. Okay. To clarify something, so the... Cape Perpetua, and I think you said Cascade Head, and then went up in Grace. Those yeah. were formed, those were volcanoes formed by the hot spots coming up. Well, it wasn't or, hot spots. It maybe was there was fluids down there. There were cracks um, because of this torquing. And I think that they were related to the hot spot, but probably not right over the top of the hot spot. And there's some interesting visuals now they do uh, I don't know if you know about geophysics but they take all the earthquakes and then they can um, triangulate where things are in the subsurface so where the lava is moving up and the Yellowstone hotspot they actually found that the conduit coming up from um, deep in the earth 
down 300 kilometers, 400 kilometers, a couple hundred miles, is over here. And it kind of gets twisted and pushed up. And, and there's a lot of, in the mantle, is not homogeneous. We have these plates, the, those subducted plates that were left behind. That's one of the things that is it's kind of hard to get your um, brain around. But we, we had that hot spot. There's, well, I should do it this way. <laughs> the the um, Silesia came in and slammed in again. The, the old subduction zone was back here with a big uh, slab of uh, older, what, of harder crust that was being pushed down below. So it's still somewhat of a um, rigid structure as it's being pushed down and it's slowly being melted and uh, uh, incorporated into the rest of the mantle. So that's still in there um, and it can restrict the flow and direct the flow one way or the other. Uh, so there's a lot of what happens to those slabs as they descend um, and, and that's really controversial <laughs> about how they broke up because a slab as it goes down it's no longer being subducted so as it goes down um, it uh, no longer is being subducted so it breaks apart and forms a um, opening that some of the lava can get, get up through. So a follow up to that so yeah. 36 million years ago when the Ahats basalt, the Celestium basalt was created. Yeah. Say something came up. Was there ocean to the our west or east and it filled in to the valley or something or, or what? Yeah, so so there is um, th that and I wonder if I do have that picture. Um, I left some things left over from previous ones. Ah, here it is. This is it from that uh, Centalia, um, Maxine, the geology of, uh, and she has this as her idea. Now this is 10 years old. Um, I don't know what she would say now or um, uh, how modify now with new in information, but she thinks it was uh, here that, um, this is where Eugene is going to be. Here's where Salem is going to be. Portland is out of the water but this is supposedly about 32 million years ago. So was there an island out here? What, what was it like? Still a lot to be determined uh, and we need more information. And then there were the volcanoes that erupted. Okay. Is this considered controversial or that's possible or? Well, they're, they're pretty sure because they had uh, marine sediments in here that this okay. there it was marine okay. at that time right. uh, so that's not real controversial exactly where this is how big the island sure. is all that you know because of course what has happened since then all this stuff has been more stuff has been um, accreted and as that more stuff has been accreted everything's uplifted the coastal range is uplifted and there's a lot of a lot of uh, things going on those are good questions. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any any other questions? Yeah. North on the beach, you can see the seawall, and there's a big layer of ash. Do you know what that ah, is? Ah, okay. And which seawall are we talking about? Just north of Yahats. Just north of Yahats. Okay. So um, there are um, I at Smelt Sands. Just beyond that. Yeah. Just beyond that. I'm not sure just south of smelt sands on kind of one of the promontories there is a midden uh the native americans threw their shells mm -hmm. and they sometimes form a white layer uh that the midden layer there's one right down uh if you go straight down to the beach on the path you can look up and see well, one this wouldn't be that this is a it's long, a long layer line, okay like that thick. Okay, I, I'll have to go look and see that because I, I've been there. I've walked that yeah, 804 I, trail. I should see it now. I'm looking at um, around Colorado Street. Okay, okay, so I'll go up and look. look at the yeah. seawall. In, in some places you can see two 
distinct layers. Yeah. Wow. Really wow. Yeah. 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 Now there's already. been there's a lot of sediments that have been deposited on top of this. In fact, at smelt sands you'll see the harder rock below, and then there's a bunch of cobbles and boulders and things. And that actually, if you look at all the cobbles and boulders, they're basalt from the volcano that was there. And they're a deposit that came down, maybe even a landslide that came down, and they form these conglomerates. Conglomerate is a, um, a rock, a solidified, that has a bunch of cobbles in it. it it's, it's sediments, but the sediments have big rocks in it. So it's called a conglomerate. And those um, do or, or were formed just after the um, volcano. Like, so if the volcano was 36, maybe as it was being eroded or shortly thereafter in the, in the next million years, a bunch of um, uh, landslides came down and piled up a bunch of rocks and then those are solidified into a conglomerate. Uh, but then on top of that, there's sand, and you can see up and down the coast how there's sandy beaches all over the place. So if you think back, well, how, how could you? It, it's so much easier if you, <laughs> if you get away from this hard geology that's here in, in Oregon and get out into the plains, plains or down into Texas and Oklahoma, and the layers are so nice and easy. Um, here it's much more complex. Yeah, and all this squishing and smushing up. Uh, it's taken a lot to decipher it. That's why I left or from Oregon State. I, I went back east, and <laughs> it's much easier there. <laughs> and then a lot of other geologists did a lot of work here in order to sort all of this out. So it's a lot better. Yes? Um, I may be way off, because this isn't my strong, tense part of science. But in Yellowstone, there's a lot of rhyolite, right? Am I yeah. right? Yep. Especially in the canyon. Yep. So how does that all, is there any rhyolite out here? No, there isn't. Okay. Um, if you think about it, so Hawaii, it's coming up and you see basalt all the time. And that's because it's percolating through and melting through basalt, which is what the ocean crust is formed of. The, the continent is formed of all sorts of stuff. Not only uh, do we have um, the granite, we have some basalt, but we also have limestones and sandstones and all of this other stuff that as the uh, hot spot, as the, the plume comes up through that, it melts some of it. And so we get a real mixture of stuff right, that's rather the, than this nice basalt that we have out here. Because the terraces at Mammoth and stuff, those are all travertine too. Yeah, yeah. So those, so those are actually carbonates so, so that they um, form from limestone. So on land, and, and a, there's a lot of deposits of organisms like limestone. Limestone is shells or whatever or, organisms uh, made calcium carbonate shells or, or whatever structures. Um, and then that's been compacted into limestone or if it's super compacted, metamorphosed, it goes to marble. So, so, so that comes up through, so that's why it's so changed, and that's why it's much different to look at the um, activity, and especially volcanic activity, within a continent. So, yeah. How far to the west does a basalt go? Good question. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I know what's really the, the only I, so they've done some drilling offshore, um, and they drilled down and they found some basalt, but it was 16 to 17 million year old basalt. So it was Columbia River basalt. That, that as I showed on the uh, Columbia River basalt coming out through the Columbia Gorge and then coming down the coast, it continued out and it was 10 miles offshore they ran into a layer of the same basalt. Unbelievable. How far that, south did that come? I was going to ask you a question. The Club River basalt. Uh, Seal Rock is the last exposure here um, on the coast that we know of. 
Uh, further north, they did the drilling further north and west and out at, to sea about 10 miles, and they ran it. Everybody was really surprised to see that Columbia River basalt. But I don't know the basalt offshore. Now, there are shoals out here, and it would be interesting to know um, uh, in uh, out from Bob's Creek and all, all this whole area has some um, shallower areas and rocky areas. And I've never investigated. Very good. Thank you for <laughs> suggesting that. I'll go look and see uh, if any of those that are exposed are a basalt. Yeah. I'm just taking on that. If you look at a chart of yeah. uh, the ocean, there's I mean, there's there's some really weird rock or, or structure out there if you just look at depth and yeah. and if you look uh, like around here um, you have to go out quite a ways to get to a hundred uh, 100 fathoms or 600 feet uh, but you go up to Depot Bay and that's a pretty short boat ride to get out I mean, and, and it's, a, it's a weird structure that's out there. Uh, Stonewall Bank, kind of off uh, Newport, down uh, to Walport area. That's another interesting one, because I know it's rock. I don't know what kind of rock. Yeah, I, I, that must, somebody must have looked into that. I just haven't, so that's, uh, thanks, I'll, I'll investigate that. Another thing for me to uh, look up. That's great, thanks. So if there's no other questions, I'll be up here and we can talk more, uh, but I'll let everybody else go. Uh, thanks for coming on this stormy winter day. And uh